I am super excited to welcome to my podcast today, Tony Bricado, who is an experienced yoga instructor. She is going to be uh, sharing with us lots of good information under the mind and body aspect of the Mind, Money, Motion podcast. She has an advanced certificate in Yoga Nidra and has spent a good amount of her background time working in the fields of wellness and fitness. Welcome, Tony. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Marie. I'm delighted to be here. It's always nice to join you on your ventures. You have such a good spirit and kind heart. And it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for um, those of you who are watching. We really appreciate you tuning in to us. Tony, you and I have run into each other in a variety of women's events, I would say, capacities over the last couple of years. And I know one of the things that uh, is new to what you're doing that I'd like to spend a good amount of time talking about today is sleep. And I know in my experience, it amazes me how many Americans seem to have sleep issues. So I'll be looking forward to talking with you uh, about that. And also, I have been a recipient of one of your vision board uh, activities or events. And I'm a big believer in the fact that what your mind focuses on or as your mind goes, so goes your life. So I, I would like to be sure that we're touching on that as well. And before we do that, maybe we should share with our listeners the, the broad background that brought you to or how you evolved to your current business and all of the key services that you actually offer. Um, well, to make a long story hopefully <laughs> short, <laughs> Uh, let's say I am a retired school psychologist and I knew and, and I would hate to have been practicing during the pandemic mm -hmm. but uh, so just a challenge for all of us but as I transitioned this is my third act and I wanted to do the things that I love to do so I focused on vision board workshops yoga um, and yoga nidra. Um, most people, if you take a yoga class, I've taken so many classes that I could not catch up. <laughs> I, could, I was the last one doing the pose that everybody in the flow was doing, or I was doing it the pose the best that I could, but I just enjoyed being there and, and went through it. I don't mind looking stupid or <laughs> Uh, I don't mind laughing at myself, but um, I believed in yoga and what it does for people, and I wanted to learn to teach my friends who had never gone to a yoga class for precisely the reason that I just hung in there for. Um, so I definitely don't have the figure of the beautiful uh, yoga practitioners on Instagram where their legs are just pointed straight up, you know, high and, and all these wonderful things. Um, I'm living proof that you can practice yoga with the body that you have. Most people say, I'm too inflexible. I can't practice yoga. Well, that's, that's precisely why you practice yoga. Nobody is is a Gumby. I don't know if you're old enough to remember. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. He's green. Yes, I remember. Yes. The bendy guy. <laughs> yes, the bendy flexible uh, toy. None of us are that, but uh, in order to maintain the, the, the flexibility in our muscles that we have as we aged yoga, there's nothing like yoga. So I, I became certified and I'm happy to teach beginning half the yoga classes where it's not a flow. You hold a pose so that you develop strength and you learn proper alignment in the pose. Because it's not about, people think it's about, can I do that pose? It's really not. It's about what your body is allowing you to do, knowing your body and breathing it in, being comfortable with that level of discomfort and seeing what your body will open up to. And over time, what you weren't capable of doing, you become capable of doing. And that's the beauty of the practice. Excellent. Well, I know when I uh, first heard you and participated in some of your yoga instruction, I needed almost a little brief yoga primer on, you mentioned Hatha yoga. 
and those of us that do some yoga but we're certainly not yogis don't really understand what's the difference hatha yoga and then you mentioned yoga nidra so maybe that would be a good clarification to share with our listeners as well yeah thank you yoga nidra is not uh, yoga in terms of poses there's a the hindi word for what we talk about is yoga is asana where you you know a pose the teacher leads you shows you a pose and then you uh, you perform it to the best of your ability that's asana yoga nidra is not asana yoga nidra is a series of guided uh, meditations or mindfulness activities that include deep breathing and visualization and you do it you practice it while you're laid down on the floor or on your sofa or on your bed and you're comfortable for however whatever the length of the yoga nidra is i love that i think there's there's so much there i feel like when when i've done vision board activities I know when we did it with you, you incorporated some breathing as a part of that vision board uh, process, which I had never experienced before, but that's the whole mind-body tie together, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, there are so many ways to breathe and to hold your breath, and most people tend to shallowly breathe. They're... they're diaphragm doesn't expand and they don't pull the breath up from below their belly button and bring the breath up to their chest but when you're performing a breathing exercise very often that's part of it you're getting a full breath and when you do that you don't realize that the largest nerve in your body which is called the vagus nerve that's calmed that brings you to a, to a, an inner sense of calm that you wouldn't believe you could get just from breathing. Mm, now so, that makes sense. Yes, and there's a lot of different breaths. In, in Hindi, it's called pranayama. Prana meaning the life force, the life breath that you have, and just the art of, of breathing. And there's so many, like I said, there's so many different breaths that it's so fascinating. It is, and seemingly so simple, and yet I know I've read numerous times, and I've come to found this to be true myself, just three deep breaths, they say, can reset the brain. So when you talk about the interrelationship with the vagus nerve, that makes sense. Yes. Can you, can you share with us, for those that maybe have not done a vision board before, what participants find valuable and helpful about that process and, and maybe even describing what it is for those that have not experienced it yet. So most people who are familiar with vision boards kind of think of it as a collage of pictures. And basically that's what it is, but I like to expand on that and, and get people out of their mind and their thinking. Like, Maybe they're, they're thinking that, oh, I want to drive a BMW. That'd be great to drive a BMW. So I'm going to look for one in the magazine, and it's going to be on my vision board. And in X amount of years, I'm going to get that BMW. Well, mine is, is in what I lead, is very different. It's part of the, the meditation practice where you learn to become an observer of your own body and your own reaction. So that you, when you look at a magazine and you look at a picture, I teach people how to notice their reaction to something and only choose those items that, that maybe they smile about, maybe they look at it and they, oh, and they, they don't even say a word, it's just a, a reaction. And, and then I, know, I tell them to notice that and then cut that picture out so that they're not preconceived putting on their what they think they should do, but rather what their what has serendipitously come out for them in that magazine, what they have noticed, and then put and gather those things and arrange them on, on your board. And it's like a self-discovery in some ways um, 
finding out if there's themes or as they took that picture out, what did it remind them of? And I know you, you recall maybe the people who shared their board afterwards and one picture was representative of over 12 things sometimes. And then as, as it spoke to the people, journaling about that and then making goals out of that so that it's hopefully it's a heart centered board of the things that they would like to create for themselves in their life excellent no i think that's way deeper <coughs> excuse me than what most people think a vision board activity is about if I, if I can shift gears a little bit, I want to move into something new that you have obviously seen a value to do, and that's related to sleep. I know you started a new Facebook group, and as I am learning more about health and sleep specifically myself, when I hear the word sleep, I now think of, it's like the dishwasher for the brain. Sleep is the time when the brain gets the cobwebs cleared and if you don't get the full whatever they say seven to nine hours you haven't really had a healthy uh, sleep and yet almost everyone i know has some sleep issue can't get to sleep can't stay asleep they wake up they can't get back to sleep <laughs> all kinds of things that when i saw you started your sleep group i thought oh my goodness this is going to help so many people so if you can share with us how you came to be offering that and what that entails and and maybe some sleep tips too sure um yoga nidra is all about getting people to relax and sleep and 45 minute yoga nidra is equivalent to three hours of sleep wow and I helped a friend of mine, I helped her husband, he's a firefighter on the Salt River Pima Reservation, and he had terrible sleep. And so I wanted to work with him and help him. Now, the Yoga Nidra research says that after 15 Yoga Nidras, the, your brain changes, and it changes by creating more gray matter in the forefront of your brain. The forefront of our brain is if we had an executive assistant um, that would make, our, make reservations for us, plan out our time, problem solve for us. If they did all those things, that's what the front of your brain does. So by having more gray matter, that's like going from dial-up internet to high-speed cable. Mm. So, that, so everything that will work better, you know, more efficiently with having more gray matter. When I finished those 15 sessions with my friend's husband, he changed his sleep hygiene. And most people know about dental hygiene, but don't know about sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene about all those activities that you do to prepare yourself for sleep. He had changed up his sleep hygiene and was sleeping for longer hours and less interruption. And so I knew that it was something that really would help people. But if I said, take a 15 week yoga nidra class to improve your sleep, I'd have a very small amount of people signing up. And so by talking about sleep, oh, I apologize for my dog, Luna. Um, but if I talk about sleep where people understand and provide more tips and that, then it, it, it gets a larger audience. So that we went sense. with that way. That makes sense. And I know... Um, I'm just going to get my dog, or my husband's going to get my dog sure we're we're all in that same boat so glad to hear you have a pet that's a healthy thing too right <laughs> she usually sits quietly behind me but how dare the landscapers oh, do their job yes, outside our window <laughs> exactly exactly well one thing that was because i i've paid attention to like you're saying the sleep uh hygiene or the preparation before you go to sleep and some of the tips 
and yet I'm, I'm still finding new terminology in your Facebook sharing, for example, sleep sanctuary and the whole aspect of coolness, yeah. not just in the room, but the other aspects of the room. So maybe those are some uh, tips that, that you can share with some of our listeners that you're already sharing in your Facebook group. Um, yes, it's so important to create a sleep sanctuary for yourself. Um, I used to be the type of person who would bring my work to my, to my bed. Maybe I would have some, some textbooks next to me, some notebooks, a mirage of uh, colored pencils, and I would want to just work till I fell asleep. But they say that that's not helpful. Not, not having clutter. Clearing your area of clutter is helpful and making sure that there's the least amount of light, especially if you have electronics plugged in, that maybe it's helpful to move the electronics in another room. Um, I have, our, our bedroom is off of our bathroom and my electric toothbrush emits light and it's a pretty big light. So we have it placed in such a way so the light doesn't come into our room. So make your room dark, clear it of clutter, maybe have ma uh, material in your sheets that are cooling, that are wicking of, fight, of, of moisture. Um, and I recently uh, talked about having pajamas in a cool wicking material and I I bought some myself just to try it out and I really like them. The material feels cooler than just the typical stuff you buy and it just feels nice on your skin. Mm -hmm. um, but that may help with the, with the temperature in the room because they, they, the research shows 65 degrees is a great temperature. Well, that's easy to do in the winter, not so economical for us in the summer, especially Arizona. So having your ceiling fan on, if you don't have a ceiling fan, but having a fan next to you is good. And certainly I don't sleep with a blanket, I sleep with a sheet. And any, anything you can do to bring your body temperature down is good. Yeah, all of those cooling things. When I thought of cool, I thought the room. I didn't think about the pajamas, the sheets, the pillow. That's uh, much more encompassing, but that all makes sense. So your Facebook group, I love the name, it's called Pause, and you seem to be offering a variety of, of events throughout and over time. So why don't we give the listeners an idea of what you have coming up, and uh, then we can share how they can find out more and where to reach you. Thank you. Um, Pause is a private Facebook group, and it's, it will only open twice a year. Right now, it, it won't open until probably the first of the year. Okay. But, but uh, for those who are members of the private uh, Facebook group, you do have access to research-based information on sleep. I have a doctorate in clinical psychology, and I love to learn. So I'm just putting research-based type information in there and offering a free yoga nidra every month as well as some videos on deep breathing that will help calm people because there are a significant number of people who can't sleep because their mind is busy and occupied with lots of things and it's hard to release those thoughts. So there's certain deep breathing exercises that that help rid that. But I also recommend journaling as something before you go to sleep. If you're that type of thinker and you just want to journal about that one event in the day that has you reliving moment by moment what you could do different and maybe look at what values it speaks to you about um, as a way to get that off your mind and, and out of your heart, as well as make your to-do list for the next day at that point in time so you can get that down and it doesn't have to 
reoccur in your brain to remember to do so and so. There is something to that, isn't there, of getting it out of your brain on paper that um, just has that stickiness and yet almost declutters the mind? Yes, exactly. You don't have to worry about forgetting it. You right. can let it go. Right, right. So tell us, Tony, uh, where folks can reach you and find out more about, uh, I know you have several other services uh, in your business as well. I, um, Tony B. Yoga is the name of my business, and you can find me on Facebook and on Twitter as Tony B. Yoga One, LinkedIn, and I have a website, TonyByoga.com. On Instagram, I'm Tony B. Discover. So anytime you want to follow me, I tend to advertise what's going on. I will have yoga nidras on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we'll be doing some virtual vision board workshops soon. Oh, excellent, excellent. And we'll have all of these links in our show notes so folks can find you and check in and see what you're up to. Your newsletter, is that tied to the Facebook group? Oh, thank you, Marie. Um, you can probably sign up through the, you can message me, private message me on any of the social medias. You can also fill out a contact form on Tony B. Yoga. But I do have two uh, newsletters, one on sleep and the other on wellness briefs. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Tony, for being here. As usual, we run out of time and have so much good information we could keep going. But um, thank you so much for sharing with our listeners today. We'll have the information about how to reach you uh, through the show notes, and uh, we'll look forward to more conversations in the future. Thank you, Marie.